Hello, my friends. Welcome back. It is time for the Morning Mindset. Time for you and for me to get our minds aligned with the truth of God's Word. Friends, have you ever met a person who's truly mysterious, who carried an air of mystery about them? Today, we're going to be talking about a guy named Melchizedek, who is one of the most mysterious figures in all of Scripture. We're going to get into that in just a moment. But before we do, I wanted to say welcome to people who are listening to The Morning Mindset from around the world. There are people in Algeria listening, people in Colombia listening, people in Canada listening, people in Kazakhstan and in Germany listening. Welcome. I'm glad you're with us. I'm glad you're here to get your mind aligned with the truth of God's Word. All right, today we're looking at this story of the life of Abraham. We're in Genesis chapter 14, 17 through 20. And I'm going to read the same passage I read yesterday because there's a guy mentioned here who is one of the most mysterious figures in all of Scripture, and his name is Melchizedek. It says, after his return from the defeat of Kedor Laomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheva, that is, the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. Now this guy Melchizedek is a true mystery man. He is a guy about whom we have lots of questions, because this is the first and only time he is mentioned in the Old Testament other than his name being used in Psalm chapter 110 in a prophecy about someone else. So, Melchizedek, let's just talk about him as we see him here in the book of Genesis. Okay, says he is king of Salem. Now, some scholars think Salem may have been short for Jerusalem, which to this point has not been a major city in the biblical story. But even more curious is it says he is high priest of God Most High. So for him to be a priest and a king was a very unusual thing in any culture. doesn't matter what you're talking about. Now, in addition, it says he is priest of God Most High. Now, that's the God that Abram has been dealing with. It's the God who's been leading Abram, who came to Abram out of nowhere and called him to himself. And yet, here's this guy, Melchizedek, who seems to have a similar kind of relationship with God and is actually a priest. So he's been teaching and leading other people to know God Most High. You see, this is all very curious because Abram is the first of the Jewish people as far as the biblical account is concerned. Hmm. Very interesting. Hmm. Now, because of these questions about Melchizedek, who he was and where he came from, the writer of Hebrews uses Melchizedek as an illustration of Jesus. Now, the book of Hebrews in the New Testament is a book that was written to essentially say Jesus is better. It says Jesus is better than the angels. It says Jesus is better than the Old Testament priests. It says Jesus is better than even the law of Moses that God gave the people. You see, the writer of Hebrews wants his readers to know Jesus is better. And one of the things he does in saying that Jesus is better than the priests and the priestly system that the law established is by using this guy, Melchizedek, as an example that Jesus is a priest in the order of Melchizedek. So in other words, Jesus is not tied to the line of Levitical priests, like Melchizedek was not. He even says Jesus had no beginning or end, as is the case for Melchizedek in the biblical story. We don't know where he came from. We don't know where he went after this. There's no beginning or end to his story. Now, some scholars believe Melchizedek could have been Jesus. He could have been a pre-incarnate version of Jesus who was there interacting with Abram and the others involved. I don't think we have to go that far because honestly, we just don't know. We don't have an answer to that question. So I don't find much use in pursuing questions like that. But the point is this, Jesus is figured in Melchizedek. In other words, Melchizedek demonstrates what Jesus is like, and the writer of Hebrews keys in on that. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, it says, Consequently, he, Jesus, is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, 
since he always lives to make intercession for them. Friends, just as Abram was blessed by Melchizedek, so all of Abram's spiritual descendants, that's you and me, who have faith in God are blessed by Jesus because we place our faith in him. And Lord, we know there's so much more to this story than we understand. There's so much more that's not revealed. But Lord, we want to get the point that Jesus is our intercessor. He lives forever, no beginning, no end, as the Son of God to make intercession for us. Thank you for giving us that great grace and that blessing.